Yes, yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. You're now listening to The Blueprint. I'm your host, A. Rich, Akeem Richens. And if you don't know me, get to know me. Once again, I'm glad to be back. I'm glad to be doing this this blueprint, my new venture in the podcasting world. Shout out my boy DM3, Dave Myers, my brother from another mother. Shout out the entire team, Buffalo Fanatics. We are continually growing this thing by the second, by the millisecond. So I hope you guys can get on board and you can join our wave. We're just knowledgeable fans that's trying to interact with other knowledgeable fans. So shout out my team, the Buffalo Fanatics. Um, I hope everybody got a chance to listen to my first EP last week, the transitional phase of the Buffalo Bills during Sean McDermott and Brandon Bean's tenure. If you didn't listen to it, you need to stop this right now (laughs) and go listen to EP1 and then come back and listen to EP2 because it gets better every week. And I'm not saying that to my own horn. I'm speaking the honest truth about that. And this week, I feel it's necessary to talk about the defensive side of the ball a little bit. I mean, uh, globally, (laughs) as Buffalo Bills fans all over the world and Buffalo Bills media, we've been talking about the offensive side of the ball a lot. Am I right? And, And don't get me wrong, rightfully so. The offensive side of the ball needs to be talked about. The offensive side of the ball was dreadful last year. The offensive side of the ball was is something that needs to be talked about and needs to get better. And we all know that. I think that uh, we kind of mismanaged the Josh Allen situation a little bit last year. I don't think he got the necessary reps leading up to the first game of the season. I don't think uh, we, we we babied him a little bit too much, in my opinion, with, with, uh, with Nathan Peterman and... With the backup, A.J. McCarron, we have coming in, stealing reps and taking reps from our, Q, from our quarterback, Josh Allen. So we mismanaged him, and he had to come in a lot earlier than expected. I don't know who had a longer starting career. <laughs> now let me know in actual time, if y'all can help me out answer this question. I don't know if Nathan Peterman or Vontae Davis was a longer starter with the Buffalo Bills, <laughs> but they had very, very... Short tenures as starters for our organization. So Nathan Peterman came in. We seen how that experience went. We we had to entrust Josh Allen in, and we we know he's a franchise guy, and he just didn't get the reps necessary throughout training camp, throughout the preseason, to be ready for the first game of the season. Nevertheless, he had to be ready a lot sooner than expected. Kind of like a mother trying to have a baby. <laughs> Am I right? Mothers is never ready. To have a baby. But they have to have this baby if it's here. And Josh Allen, he was a baby. He wasn't ready. But his time was now, which was the Baltimore game. And obviously he wasn't ready because we handle him like a baby. We handle him as such. So we had that experience. He got hurt, which was probably a blessing in disguise for Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills organization. We have a little bit of Matt Barkley experience in there. We, we can throw in some Derek Anderson experiences in there. And there's a lot of reason to talk about <laughs> the Buffalo Bills offense. And why I didn't even get into the offensive line. But I think it's necessary to switch gears a little bit. Just a little bit. And talk about the Buffalo Bills on the defensive side of the ball. Let's talk about all phases of the defense. From the defensive line to the linebacking corps. To the secondary. But before I even get in to all three phases of the defensives, defenses, I think it's necessary to get into the coach a little bit, Leslie Frazier. Leslie Frazier coming into his third year as the defensive coordinator for the Buffalo Bills. And I'm not going to lie to you. I was not a Leslie Frazier fan leading up to his hire. I always thought that Leslie Frazier played a, a very bland cover two defense a very vanilla cover two defense. I'm trying to figure nice ways to say it. <laughs> a very predictable cover two defense. I've seen that predictable cover two defense with uh, the Minnesota Vikings when he was the head coach there. I've seen that predictable cover two defense uh, when he was with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers under Lovey Smith. And he was the defensive coordinator there. So I was really concerned with Sean McDermott 
and and acquiring Leslie Frazier. Then I thought to myself, once we acquired him, who the hell is going to call plays? Call the plays. Who the hell is going to call the plays? Maybe uh, Leslie Frazier is not going to call plays. Maybe Sean McDermott is going to go is going to call plays. Why? Because Sean McDermott is a new head coach. Why else? Let's take it a step further. Sean McDermott is a head coach. Sean McDermott got the head coaching gig for the Buffalo Bills because of his defensive prowess with the Carolina Panthers four out of six years with a top 10 defense. And people that know me know my saying, I just didn't make the shirt yet. The shirt is coming soon. (laughs) The shirt is coming soon. But I always felt that head coaches should do what got them hired. This is why you got hired. You got hired because you was an exceptional defensive coach. You got hired because you did a great job calling plays as a defensive coordinator. Do what got you hired. Kyle Shanahan's a head coach with the San Francisco 49ers. What is, San, what is, what is Kyle Shanahan doing? Kyle Shanahan's calling plays. Why? Because he's doing what got him hired. Sean McVay. <laughs> Sean McVay is over there calling plays with uh, the Los Angeles Rams. Why is Sean McVay calling plays? Because he's doing what got him hired. And I don't want to hear, well, Sean McDermott's a defensive guy. That's why. No, you got hired for a reason. (laughs) You got hired because your defensive skills do what got you hired. Nevertheless, Sean McDermott want to play head coach. He want to play the Doug Marone Marone guy. He want to play the the leader, the head coach, similar to Doug Marone. And he going to have the guys around him call call the plays while he kind of oversee everything and oversee everybody, which is okay. I didn't like it, but it was okay. We're going to see what happens. Leslie Frazier comes in. He's now calling plays for our defense. He did a pretty decent job uh, the first year. Am I right? We're not talking about statistics. I know we finished 16, 17, 18 in statistics. I understand that. But when you look at the games in that first year with Leslie Frazier, Leslie Frazier was getting a lot of turnovers. Leslie Frazier defense was causing havoc they was whether it was luck whether it was the bounce whether it was the football gods (laughs) I don't know but we was getting a lot of turnovers that first year and if we didn't get turnovers the defense struggled that's when we struggled that's when we struggled on uh, um, uh, between the lines of the defense in terms of rushing attacks getting chunk yards and bulk yards against us we struggled at times when we couldn't get to the quarterback and now the quarterbacks can sit back there and pick our defenses secondary apart we struggled at times in it and it was concerning it got it got really concerning nevertheless second year comes around we're not getting that much turnovers but we're we're generating a lot of pressure we're generating a lot of pressure jerry hughes only has seven sacks but i'm pretty sure Circles around the NFL would tell you Jerry Hughes did not lose a step. Jerry Hughes is still a, a, an above average pass rusher. And I really feel that that is the case with Jerry Hughes. But nevertheless, something clicked. Something clicked within the first two years with Leslie Frazier. And I got to shout out my boy DM3 Dave Myers for this tidbit. The Los Angeles Chargers game. Where we did lose 31-20. Uh, Leslie Frazier was getting eat up. His defense was getting lit up in the beginning of the game. Something happened. I don't know if Sean McDermott kind of lit a fire under Leslie Frazier and told him uh, to pick up his, his schematics and pick up his game. But ever since then, ever since that game, I've seen a lot of improvement from our Buffalo Bills defense. I've seen us finally doing different things as far as stunts, as far as blitzes, getting Lorenzo Alexander in different situations where he can be effective rushing the passer. And I believe that uh, coming into the third year where we still have our defensive coordinator and we still have our head coach, that little that structure that we have, we still have uh, 10 out of 11 starters coming back from our, for our defense last year, and that one new guy is Ed Oliver. Talk about Ed Oliver and getting right into the defensive line. I love Kyle Williams. <laughs> no, I'm a Kyle Williams fan, but we all know that Kyle Williams was playing like a guy that was about to retire. He was playing like a guy that passed his prime. He still played ab- uh, very well. He did a very good job, but... 
his impact wasn't the same as the Kyle Williams uh, that we're accustomed to seeing over the years when he was uh, a Buffalo Bills defensive tackle and he was a monster. So now we put uh, Ed Oliver and substitute him with Kyle Williams. Me personally, I believe that Ed Oliver is a stud. Um, people are a little bit concerned about his weight. They're concerned that he's a little underweight to play defensive tackle. He's around 275, between 275 and 285. Me personally, I'm not really concerned about his weight. I'm not really concerned about his short arms. I think that Ed Oliver is a disruptive force in the middle. We're talking about a guy that played in Houston, ladies and gentlemen, right over the nose. An undersized guy right over the nose that caused havoc. Now in the NFL, we can uh, move him over to Kyle Williams' position in a three technique and make him be that disruptive defensive tackle he was, sort of, he was supposed to be in Houston. But don't get me wrong. <laughs> he had a very good career with the Houston Cougars. There's a reason he's got picked ninth overall. But I do think in my heart that he's going to be a even better NFL player because he's in his natural position where he could be a disruptive force in that three technique defensive tackle in Ed Oliver. And because of the acquisition or the draft of Ed Oliver, it's going to improve certain guys. Now, I'm not crazy about statistics, but we're talking about a team on defense that was the number two overall defense in the NFL last year. People wonder, can we get better? Do we get worse? Do we go up? Do we go down? I don't think we can do nothing but get better, ladies and gentlemen. We could do nothing but get better on defense, and I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to break down some thoughts and reasons on why I feel that we could get better and we could be an even better defense than that than we was last year. I spoke about Ed Oliver. We're going to get into Trent Murphy a little bit. Trent Murphy, we're talking about a guy we signed on a three-year deal, $21 million. Trent Murphy came off his, his PD use. We know Trent Murphy came off his torn ACL. He came on our team recovering from a torn ACL. Because you're recovering from a torn ACL, Trent Murphy had to battle a lot of muscle injuries, right? We heard Trent Murphy battling injuries all through camp. He couldn't play all camp. Trent Murphy was battling quadricep injuries and little linger muscle strains throughout his whole season. Still had a respectable season. Nine quarterback hits, four sacks, and ten starts. But we're talking about a guy who's now two years removed from knee surgery. We're talking about a guy who should be completely healthy from all his nagging injuries. And I don't expect nothing but, uh, uh, but a better play from Trent Murphy. He's only 28 years old. And he's healthy once again. And because of the play of Trent Murphy, I think that uh, the defense can ascend. We're talking about a Shaq Lawson, the guy who's playing for his contract, who's playing for his next contract, Shaq Lawson. I don't, I don't think it's going to be with the Buffalo Bills. Unless he have this extraordinary season, this is Shaq Lawson's last year as a Buffalo Bill. Unless, like I said, unless something crazy happens. Nevertheless, we're talking about a guy who, who's... Uh, had a career year last year. It wouldn't look like it when you look on paper. It looks similar to the year before when he had a disappointing season. That's the crazy thing about statistics. Uh, 2017, Shaq Lawson had 33 tackles, four sacks, and people was disappointed. Last year, he had 30 tackles, <laughs> four sacks, and people were like, yo, Shaq Lawson is coming around. <laughs> so uh, people can't get too crazy about stats. You really have to look at the, the game itself to see how the player's performing. Nevertheless, Shaq Lawson is playing on a contract year. And don't get me wrong, he's not the, the guy we thought he was. He's not that 10 sacks a guy that we thought he can get every year. He has 10 sacks in three years with the Buffalo Bills. So he's not that guy. Nevertheless, he's playing for a contract. He's a, a stout run defender, and because he is that stout run defender, and he is playing for his next contract, and he is a guy that's only in his, uh, going into his fourth season, he can also approve, improve and ascent. We spoke about Ed Oliver already. We know what Star Latoule is doing. 
well, people are not happy with him. <laughs> people don't think he does nothing. He doesn't make the impact to warrant his contract. But in Sean McDermott's scheme, we need a star Latoule on our roster. He's doing exactly what we signed him to do. We had to pay him that money for him to come to Buffalo in the first place. Now we move over to Jerry Hughes, who I think is the biggest beneficiary of everybody. Uh, we're talking about Trent Murphy, who's finally healthy. We're talking about Ed Oliver, who's not even in his prime, who's going to be a disruptive force. Now you got Jerry Hughes, who people cannot focus on anymore as the main guy. Last year, Jerry Hughes, when you have uh, a washed-up Kyle Williams and you have a lingering injury in, in Trent Murphy, uh, you can double-team a Jerry Hughes. You can plan uh, schematically to shut down Jerry Hughes and, and take advantage of the rest of the defense. This year, this time around, I don't think you can do that. If you double Jerry Hughes, <laughs> uh, uh, Ed Oliver might get off. If you double Ed Oliver, Jerry Hughes might get off. Don't forget Trent Murphy. Trent Murphy is healthy now. <laughs> so we, we have a lot of good things going for us. We're talking about guys who was a shell of themselves last year, but we still managed to be the number two overall defense. Let's go to the, the next level, shall we? The linebackers. The linebackers can only get better. Lorenzo Alexander is the ageless wonder. We're not going to worry about uh, the ageless wonder on his decline. He is what Frank Gore is on the offensive side of the ball, where age is just a number. But we talk about Matt Milano. Matt Milano, before he broke his leg, was playing at a Pro Bowl level. Matt Milano was playing at an elite level level at linebacker. He's rangy, he has speed, he's a good tackler, and he makes differences on that second level. And then you have Tremaine Edmonds. Tremaine Edmonds, we're talking about a, a 19, 20 year old kid <laughs> playing mid, middle linebacker in a combative sport. The man couldn't even get liquor. He couldn't even go in the damn liquor store and purchase himself a beer. <laughs> but he's in the National Football League playing middle linebacker for the Buffalo Bills. Matt Milano, Tremaine Edmonds can do nothing but get better. And being that we had a number two overall defense last year, that's something that can be scary. <laughs> that's something that can be very, very scary. We add, we added the Joseph kid from Florida. We obviously like speedy, physical linebackers. I know that uh, Vashawn Joseph, he kind of wandered around a lot with the Florida Gators. He kind of uh, left his assignments a lot. So if we can get him in the film room. We could get his, his, his football IQ up in terms of how to play the position, in terms of where to be, in terms of uh, being in the right place in the right time and knowing your assignments. Vashawn Joseph could be another athletic, rangy linebacker that we have in the fold and that could do some damage for us as well. Going to the back end, we have, in my opinion, we have the best safety tandem in football. Now, don't get me wrong. We don't, they're not the biggest guys. They're, they're not going to overpower you. But Micah Hyde, Jordan Poyer, has been solid since, since day one. They've been playing consistently since day one. They've been durable since day one. And I believe we have, if not the best, damn sure top three safety tandem in the NFL in, in Jordan Poyer and Micah Hyde. And I don't think they can do nothing but get better. Do, are, did they reach their ceilings? Did those two particular players reach their ceilings? Mike Hyde, Jordan Poirier? Maybe. Maybe those guys reached their ceilings. So maybe those guys are going to play exactly how they played last year and the year before. They might not get no better. But if we can get them, to, them consistent performances we got those last two years, we can do nothing but be grateful because that's a hell of a performances from those two safeties. And we already have ascending players in the linebacking corps and on the defensive front. Going over to the cornerback spot, I was always a little, I always wondered a little bit. For, in my opinion, to take that next step, to take that neat, that, that elite step, I always felt that I love the Buffalo Bills defense. And as much as I talk about them ascending, it's a reason why we try to get Ansar, right? It's a reason. <laughs> we wanted to improve. We seen an improvement. We brought them in. We was trying to improve the team. So we, could, we, we see that if, if it's necessary and if we can make that improvement, we're going to make that improvement. And I felt that maybe we could have did the same thing at the cornerback position. 
Don't get me wrong, Levi Wallace came in. He did an exceptional job, undrafted rookie. Um, his our undrafted rookie on the defensive side of the ball. We have an undrafted rookie and Robert Foster on, uh, on the offensive side of the ball that came and developed nicely for our organization. But I always felt that maybe we can add another veteran presence. Maybe we can add more talent to that secondary. What's the worst that can happen? It's just a deeper roster. It's just an even better roster. You got to have depth in this NFL to win on both sides of the ball so it couldn't hurt. I'm not mad at the Kevin Johnson move. Kevin Johnson move was a, was a solid move. I think that we needed another cornerback. Obviously, we needed another body. He's a former first-round pick of the Houston Texans. We know he have concussion, concussion, a concussion history. He said that he's good. His doctors say he's good and he's ready to go. He struggled with the Houston Texans. We hoping he can be that diamond in the rough. We know Sean McDermott and Brandon Bean is always looking uh, for that diamond in the rough. We are always looking for that guy that we can that we can find and, and pour ten million dollars out of performance by paying him six hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> we always looking for that diamond in the rough. So we hoping Levi Wallace is that guy. We hope Kevin Johnson probably could be that EJ Gaines of two years ago. EJ Gaines was our diamond in the rough. He's also back in the fold. EJ Gaines, Levi Wallace. Kevin Johnson will battle for that number two cornerback spot. And I like the depth. At worst, somebody's at, at worst, somebody's gonna lose and be on the bench. And that third corner or that fourth corner is gonna be pretty damn good. I'd rather have Kevin Johnson as my third corner. I'd rather have EJ Gaines as my fourth corner than Pitts as my fourth corner. You know, so uh I like the depth that we have along our cornerback position. Nevertheless, I always thought that we could have got even better. <laughs> I always thought we could have got a known guy to go with Tredavious White. Let's get a known guy and, and really solidify and still get a, a EJ Gaines or a Kevin Johnson with this known guy, Tredavious White and Levi Wallace, and battle it out. Nevertheless, we took kind of a, I don't want to say shortcut with the cornerback position. I don't want to say we're toying with the cornerback position because we did double up with Kevin Johnson and EJ Gaines. But... I really feel, and no disrespect to those guys. <laughs> I don't know, they might listen to the show in the future. No disrespect to those guys. But I really feel that we, we had the money to make an even bigger and better investment. But nevertheless, we're going to see what happens. Now, tell me what y'all think. What you think about the defense on, on all phases, defensive line, linebacker, safety, cornerback. Do you think our defense can improve Upon the number two ranked defense we had last year like I do. Um, I really feel that we can improve upon this defense. The reason I feel that we can improve upon this defense is because continuity. 10 out of 11 starters return. The 11th starter may be the best player on the defensive line <laughs> in Ed Oliver. And we have ascending players to go along with it. Uh, guys that's going to progress from year one to year two. Guys like Tremaine Edmonds. Guys like Matt Milano to, to improve. Guys like Harrison Phillips to improve. And I know my boy DM3, he's been talking about Jordan Phillips. And he's been getting first team reps. And he's been the first guy coming out with the when the uh, first team defense come in. I'm not going to look too, too much into that. <laughs> DM3, Dave Myers, I won't look too much into that. Buffalo Bills brass, their organization, Sean McDermott, that's just, the, that's just the precedent that they set for their rookies. The rookies always is going to come in and, and get second or third team reps to start. The rookie for Sean McDermott and Brandon Bean is not going to come in and step in with the first team. He's always got to earn his stripes. And don't get me wrong, <laughs> he's going to earn his stripes. He's going to be in there with the first team at some point. We're just not handing it to him so don't be alone when you see jordan phillips out there ed oliver is is only a matter of time <laughs> it's only a matter of time but ladies and gentlemen you have listened to the blueprint i'm your boy a rich akeem richens if you don't know me get to know me which i think about our defense is our defense elite do you believe our defense is elite 
Y'all let me know. Until next time.